Welcome everyone to our first webinar uh, hosted by WakeCab, and we are very proud to have uh, Luis uh, uh, from uh, V6 joining us in, in this uh, webinar. Uh, Luis is basically comes with um, 25 years of experience as a construction executive. He, has, he holds a Master of Science in Architecture by uh, Luciada University in Lisbon with several major uh, high in high rise projects delivered in all uh, different countries, uh, mainly uh, in, in the GCC, uh, in United Arab Emirates, Saudi, Bahrain, Angola, Switzerland, and other projects in Europe. Uh, currently projects, uh, he is basically the project director in uh, of Uptown Dubai, phase one. It's a 340 meters high rise tower in JLT with 78 floors and more than 200,000 square meters. Additionally, Luis is uh, on global executive MBA in uh, NSEED where he is developing a project related with construction industry efficiency improvement. And uh, without further ado, I'll, uh, we'll start with uh, uh, Luis' presentation. Um, let me just show, here we go. So the floor is yours. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a pleasure to be together here with you today. Uh, I hope everyone is feeling safe uh, during this uh, pandemic that uh, we are all experiencing. And um, I hope uh, everyone enjoys the next couple of minutes uh, where we will be sharing with, with you some um, experiences and mainly some, some challenges that uh, we have been facing um, together with um, together with uh, our Sinai's team. Um, <clears throat> so we have been sharing over the last uh, the last couple of months uh, with Wake Up uh, an experience, a digitization experience, which um, which fits very well within um, the basic vision um, in order to improve efficiency in construction. Um, our, our motto is uh, create sustainable solutions for excelling, creating sustainable solutions for a better world. And um, digitization, in particular, the wake up fits quite well uh, in it. So I'll, I'll guide you through a small presentation we have prepared about um, the framework of uh, digitization and innovation within the Uptown Dubai Phase 1 project which is a high-rise tower uh, in, in, um, in JLT in Dubai. Um, and uh, our, our main objective um, here is, is to improve efficiency and uh, productivity. And for that, um, we are, we are uh, trying to use as much as possible um, uh, a, digita a digitization uh, approach in order to improve, uh, to improve efficiency and achieve our goals. Um, we, we started engaging um, with a series of startups through, um, through the, the, the basic accelerator program, um, in, in, in which uh, some, some startups started cooperating with us. And in the meantime, some others joined, like, like Wake Up, Sobrono, and, and, and Propagate that we will be presenting today. So I'll ask you, Hassan, can you, can you move forward, please? Um, so having said that, uh, I've, I've, just, I've just highlighted, um, so our objective is, is, is to, to gather uh, data uh, to resolve silos and then, um, and, and then the next step will be, will be to start analyzing this data and, and to take decisions based on, uh, based on uh, informed data. You move on, please. Yeah, so the use cases we are presenting to you is in our current project, the one you can see here in the background, and you can also see it on the screen, which is a 340 meters high tower. We have 330 there, I'm sorry for that. Um, which is a mixed use development in, um, in Jumeirah Lake Towers surrounding, which is the Uptown Dubai uh, phase one. This is a set of seven towers that we're building the first one. Um, which is a 200,000 square meter um, 
uh, development, uh, which includes uh, offices, a five-star hotel and branded residences, and some uh, retail and food and beverage um, in, in the bottom, uh, in, in the podium area. Uh, th thanks a lot for that. I think, I think this is a very good point that you mentioned the change management and implementing technology on the construction has been, I mean, I mean, everybody knows the construction is the least or the, among the least digitized sector in the world. And one of the biggest reasons they mentioned is basically is adopting the technology and change management. And luckily for Wake Up, this is one of the first thing we have to tackle is how can we basically get the technology to the site with zero training and zero disruption? So um, I, uh, I, would, I would allow you maybe to, uh, I know you have been talking uh, a lot about other technologies, which makes it very exciting for us to work with you guys. Uh, so Luis, would, I would love to hear from you um, an introduction about WakeUp from your perspective before I dig deep into what WakeUp is. WakeUp, uh, we, we met, let's say, what, eight months ago, eight, nine months ago, something like that, or maybe a year ago. Uh, you, you came to the site, uh, Sam came to the site, brought by one of the construction managers that, that told me, Miguel, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing, uh, uh, there's a guy here trying to sell some helmets with some, with, with some uh, <laughs> location devices. And I thought, okay, another one that comes that doesn't have a lot to sell. But, 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 but anyhow, um, let, let's listen. And, and when we started talking, uh, you... you, you, you you grab my attention because of the, the, the huge potential uh, that, uh, that the platform has. So coming to the construction site uh, and the challenge to have a geolocation device to, to know where everyone is, uh, a geolocation device that you don't need to maintain, that the battery lasts for years, um, and, and giving to the contractor the possibility of just enjoying the data without having to worry about anything was the biggest advantage. That means we have someone that comes to our project that tells us where people are and tells us the look with where people are, we will manage the dashboards as you want and we will develop them together with you and you, you will track the data that you want, the way you want to use. That sounded fantastic. Uh, so today, um, we, we've been working together all these months and we have, um, we have developed the tool to a point um, that for this particular trade that we are using it, we are at about, let's say, 90% development for the structure. Uh, so we know where people are, we know uh, how much time do, do we spend on the way. Uh, we are trying to track how much time do we lose um, by not being in the workplace, um, in order to allow us to, to in order to allow us to, um, I, I think you stopped sharing your screen. Uh, yeah, I'm sharing another. Right? Yeah, 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 I'm sharing uh, another okay. one right so now. So, in, in order to allow us to um, to improve logistics, to improve to to improve the way buses arrive to the site, to improve the way uh, we deploy the welfare facilities on the job. Uh, in order to make sure that our labor force that we have around 2000 uh, don't waste their time on the way and really spend their time on the right work front doing the right task at the right time. So th that's the biggest advantage is to have the right man in the right place. When, when we work on a high rise building on a 78 floor building, it's very easy to get lost. So people might, might spend three to four hours a day on the way, considering that they need to arrive to the project, they need to go on the hoist, they need to queue to the hoist, they need to go on the hoist, they need to arrive to the workplace, come for lunch, come for pray, come for rest, and then leave the workplace. So th there are several trips up and down. And if we know uh, where people are, uh, we will be able to not only um, quantify the number of lifts and hoists, uh, as well to, to optimize where do we put the, 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 the welfare facilities, where do we put the toilets, where do we put the mess halls, in order to make sure that people don't lose time. Um, so if we have huge uh, uh, queues waiting for the hoist, that means the hoist is stopping in too many places. Or, or we have another problem. So we need to, we need to do something. And we, we will only know what we need to do if we know the problem. 
So allowing, exactly. getting data available means we know where the problem is. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great way of actually uh, the feedback system that shows you if whatever action you take immediately shows you the impact on the next day. So you can see if whatever action you took uh, by, let's say, adjusting the logistics, uh, by does it really affect positively or negatively uh, people presence on the working area? And uh, that's, that's, we will show some results today. And speaking of Wake Up, for people who never heard about us, I'll, I'll give you a really a quick recap of what we do. Wake Up provide a, a real-time location service, and it's an IoT platform. It's designed specifically for the construction industry. And what we mean by that is we really took into account the challenges that made it very hard to implement technology on the site. I mean, look, we could have just came up with a smart watch or something to train or really, let's say to connect the construction uh, uh, workers or the construction sites. But the problem in, the, in this industry, it's more about, there are like two types of problems. We have the site that is so dynamic, uh, power is not always available, and the lack of connectivity on the site. And then you have the workers who are also dynamic because you have different subcontractors. They are reluctant to wear additional equipment. Equipment. What we mean here is if you ask a worker to maintain a phone or, a, or, or let's say a smart device, it's, it's not that easy to make sure everyone is, is actually connected. Now, that, that also comes into uh, uh, make, uh, the training and onboarding is also another problem. Look, imagine a, a device that we need to be configured or trained to, to, be, uh, to be used, and you have thousands of workers coming in, and those, those thousands of workers are also changing in daily. That makes it very infeasible to actually invest on training people. And this is where WakeCap comes in. Our solution requires zero training and uh, zero onboarding. People are expected to just wear the hard hat and they're good to go. All the sensor, all the technology are embedded on the knob of the hard hat. And notice it's not even an accessory. We didn't really kind of made it an accessory that attached to the hard hat because it will get lost. We tried that. We, we, come, uh, we come from, uh, we, 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 we were fortunate uh, enough to work with, uh, with a big contractor company like CCC and other companies who shared with us their the, the, the huge experience in trying to digitize and connect worker on the site. And uh, this is one of the benefits of, of basically uh, leveraging this history of trials. So Wake Up, we will walk you through the, how Wake Up works by implementing it in, in, in the, the project that we are talking about today, today which is the Dubai Uptown, uh, to give you an idea of what kind of information and how easy to deploy such a solution with, uh, without actually affecting or disrupting the operation on the site. Now, what kind of data we collect? We basically collect hours data. So basically here we have, um, we know how many hours people spend on the site, where do they, where, where those hours being spent, meaning in, a, in which zone, in which floor, and whether the hard hat or let's say the, 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 the helmet is being used or not. This is, becomes very interesting because the hard hat is one of the things that you expect everyone is wearing it. And Wake Up have successfully demonstrated for the first time, productivity and safety can come uh, can come together. Either you work safely by wearing the hard hat or not working at all or, or not working at all because as a, as a contractor, they were only looking at the active hours. They were only looking at the hours that, that basically uh, uh, contributed in the site uh, while wearing the hard hat. And we will talk about this in a second and how this will reflect on the results as well. Now, knowing this information, it gives us a lot of potential use cases. As uh, Miguel mentioned earlier, knowing where everyone is on the site, this kind of data, if we combine it with project information, we can measure productivity, we can measure efficiency, we can update and improve safety as we go. Here is just a list of some of the use cases that we have already implemented and some of them are coming soon. And uh, we'll present some of the results that we are having today uh, in, in, uh, in DUT related to efficiency, safety, and also productivity. <clears throat> so we also have COVID-19. I mean, this is one of the, 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 the most disrupting thing that we, we have, but 
uh, positively for Wake Up, we have been promoting real-time tracking on the site for a while right now. And many contractors are actually finding it difficult or like, let's say, ha uh, finding, like, m m finding it difficult to actually implement such a solution. When COVID-19 comes, Asa, I'm sorry, go ahead. Let me let you, let me let you breathe. Let me okay, let please you go ahead. Here. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's really interesting because um, we did not ask, uh, we did not ask uh, Wake Up for any COVID-19 features. And one day, uh, Sven Bakus, our digitization manager, and, and by the way, um, the credit has to be given to Sven, because agree. to Sven and to Johannes, Johannes is not in the attendance, um, because they, they, they've really been driving all this uh, digitization uh, initiative here in our They project. are our champions. And, and one, one, yeah, they are. Uh, and and, and one, of, um, one, one of the days, uh, Sven came to me and said, look, look at this, look at this dashboard that, uh, that Asana and his team um, developed for, for COVID-19. So what do you mean COVID-19? Um, <laughs> what are they doing? No, they, 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 are tra they can track people and they can track proximity. So you, 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 can, you can track through the helmets and through the network that we have on site who was close to who, for how long, in which place, which is amazing. You can define the zone, you can define the distance, and you can define the period that you want to consider close proximity. Um, okay, if you define it too close, that means you, you quarantine 2,000 men. Uh, then, then everything, then everything, everyone is too close. Um, yeah. But okay, that, that, that also depends on we, which moment are, you, are we in the social distancing. For example, uh, we are not in a different world today than, than we were three weeks ago, but today the world is opening. Uh, so we are looking at it in a, in a different way. So basically with this information, uh, I believe that we have the tools to be ready for a potential major outbreak that, that, that can come up. So we have the data exactly. and we have the data analytics already behind it, which is fantastic. Yeah, I agree. And this is one of the main thing is like you have 2000 people on the site and some, you know, when, when, when a case getting tested or, uh, or a case has been identified, you want to know like within, within very uh, quick responses, like how many people were in contact with this person, which zones they were in that, uh, area so you can take the, 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 the recommended measure to control the spread of such a virus. And uh, as you said, this having the tools available makes it very, uh, uh, very effective. And we, we, we're fortunate enough to actually work with B6 and other, other clients so far. So they, uh, uh, they're now using WakeCap to uh, help actually reopen the sites, especially in, in countries where it's mandatory uh, nowadays uh, to ensure uh, full control of the, the, spread of the, uh, the spread of the virus. So, Implementing wake up. I'm, 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 re I'm really sorry. sorry for the. I'm really sorry for this picture because this picture does not reflect uh, where we are today. Uh, yes, we, I agree. We, this we are we are already in floor twelve uh, on the slab. And this shows that that we are in floor six. They're the in floor four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was acquired actually from uh, two months. Uh, I I think a little bit more. So it was not uh, the the the. It's my uh, it's my uh, problem that I actually acquired this image. So, well, uh, it's, it doesn't reflect the reality. Okay. <laughs> so we'll we'll make sure of that. <laughs> so today, when we come with Wake Up, what do we do? We take the blueprints that are provided by the customer for every floor, and then we digitize it by actually uh, uploading it to our system, and then we start defining the zone. These zones are actually the same zones that. Uh, people on the site are actually using it. So, for example, what you're looking here is the ground floor of uh, DUT where they have all the different zones here. And what's interesting th that we look here is zones are come with different colors. So we have here the direct productive zones that come in from the tower and all the floors. Uh, also, we have the indirect productive zone where the workshops and the unloading uh, spots, offices as well, uh, are available. And then we have the non-productive zone, which uh, uh, like include the rest area, uh, parking, and other location where there is basically considered a, a non-working area. This will come really interesting later for analysis. 
Now, when it comes to wake up, there are two kind of things we need to configure. First is we have those uh, an devices we call anchors. They are battery powered. We are uh, we uh, we we basically allow people to uh, or allow the uh, uh, the team to uh, to deploy these anchors on the site without the need of power or uh, or actually the the the, the need for a, a lot of maintenance. Uh, so th these anchors are deployed on the site based on the number of zones, how big is the areas, and it allows us to uh, provide a local mesh network or a local connectivity to the site, which also being used to determine the people location based on the signal strength emitted by these sensors. Um, now, when it comes to deploying the, the, the or connecting workers, it's as simple as just wearing the hard hat. So we come to the we come to the site. We 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 prepare those uh, hard hats with an ID, with the number, with the number for uh, for each workers as they come to the safety induction. So the process works as follows: any worker who come to the site are re is required to do the induction. They will meet us. We introduce them to wake cap uh, with the with the safety uh, uh, team in in DUT, and then we deploy uh, the hard hat, and that they're off to go. So from from uh, uh, an onboarding perspective is very, very seamless, and it takes less than a minute to connect a single worker. I, I believe in one day we were able to connect 600 workers, mm -hmm. uh, and that shows you how seamless and easy and scalable the system is. Basically, now, this happens during the safety induction. Basically, this exactly. happens during the safety induction, yeah. Immediately, yes. And every worker, uh, every worker, uh, when is basically loaded to the system, that we we basically have the, their trade, uh, which contractor they work for, and if they have a crew, and of course a work shift associated with this with these workers uh, as they come. We also offer uh, a full workforce management system on uh, on our platform, uh, also a crew management system. Uh, in addition, uh, and this is where it's actually, uh, the, w w this is one of the main uh, features that we have. We provide a real-time view of where workers are on the site, and we are actually improving this system as we go to allow uh, uh, different stakeholders to look uh, at the data and see where people are all the time. This, this dashboard is, is very interesting because... Um okay, it, it, has, it has one of the things, which is the worker's name, that we decided... We decided for data protection not to have. So uh, exactly. at this moment, we have a code. We have a code on every name um, because we don't want to associate uh, names with uh, with numbers because we f we feel it's important. It's it's not. We are not looking for the names of people. We are looking for the trends that help us to that help us to 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 define to define the losses. Um, but what you see on the right, it's it's a dashboard that uh, that we, that Asan is developing with his team, um, in order to allow us at any given moment in time to understand uh, how many people from which trade are in which floor. Are, and are they in their uh, productive floor or not? So right now it's relatively easy because we have the structure and the structure only occupies the last five, six floors um, because we occupy the, the, the three active floors uh, plus the, the, the deep propping floors and then we come to the finishes. But when we come to the finishes, we will be working in this project in uh, 22 floors at the same time. So we better know uh, if people are in the right place, otherwise we're going to have three and a half thousand men uh, that we don't know if they are in the right place. So we better know, uh, and that will allow us to to track if if the three week look ahead is 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 giving us the right um, the right planning and are we executing accordingly or not? Because if we are supposed to have uh, 20, uh, 20 masons on, on, on floor number 35, uh, we don't expect to have two in 35, two in 36, two in 37, two in 38. So we expect to optimize the way we work and, and to track as well. Exactly, exactly. And uh, uh, we, we did talk about COVID-19 earlier, about some of the use cases. Uh, I will uh, move on to the analytics because of the time. Uh, as as uh, Luis mentioned earlier, we provide a customized uh, uh, dashboard that allow uh, the, the different stakeholders to track different KPIs. And one of the interesting things that we looked at with, with uh, P6 is 
um, the, 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 the efficiency ratio of how people spend their time. And, and this is an example of data. I remember when I, when I first met uh, Luis, he told me something. He said, look, he said, look, Hassan, I want to make sure that all of my people spend more than 65% on their productive zones. And this is one of the, the, the like, he, he knows exactly what he's looking for in terms of how much time people are expected in a site. And we looked at how can we actually improve this number uh, from, by just looking at the data. And uh, as, uh, as Miguel mentioned earlier, I want to take different action to help reduce the time spent on indirect productive area and non-productive area. Uh, and this is just give you an example of how this, this baseline shows uh, the, the trend of going to uh, the, the data. Uh, and let's give you maybe a, a more, uh, let's say, a fresh data from, from the site. Instead of looking at weekly, we could have even looked at a uh, daily view. So here is an example of a crew where they achieve 91% of their active hour in productive area and uh, uh, less than or almost 7% seven, seven of their hours on the whole week in a non-productive area. Uh, also, we can look at what this is by, by day instead of by week. What, what, you're showing, what you're showing is quite reasonable. That's, that's what we aim to achieve, 7% uh, exactly. in non-productive area. That means people are on the way, they take the necessary time. Uh, we, we, are off, we are out of what we, of what we aim for when we are, yeah. in some cases, at 80%. When we are at 80%, we have a problem that we need to resolve in the next week. Exactly. And this is the kind of tool that, this is actually one of the interesting use cases that we have in the perform meeting where we sit. And, and this is the kind of thing that has really helped the open the discussion and say, okay, this crew is doing well, where other crew is not doing well, and try to figure out what happened in order for, for the, the management to take the proper action. Uh, we also see here, for example, the active hour versus the reported hour. So it gives you an idea of how many actual hours basically being spent. Um, another view of the data here that is uh, uh, also toward the punctuality, like how many hours are lost due to late arrival or early leave, uh, and we're looking at a single crew, a crew of 14 people, and what we can notice here is people are almost coming in time and leaving in time. I mean, we, uh, uh, if we look at the, the hours uh, uh, by workers, we see that almost uh, all the workers are coming on time or actually uh, uh, coming even earlier. Uh, and it, another interesting measure we look here is the time they spent this crew to reach the direct productive zone, which is uh, also related to logistic. How can we, so, so how the, the actual logistic of the site affecting, um, uh, uh, affecting the, this time. And, uh, and that, that was one of the main metrics, especially when, uh, as, as Luis mentioned earlier, uh, the, the hoist area and the time spent to, uh, in the waiting areas, which is also mentioned in, in, in here. This is some of the example of the dashboard that was developed for uh, P6 to understand uh, what's, what's going on uh, on the site. Uh, I think we, we uh, unless you have another uh, f uh, final comment in this before we take question, Luis. Um, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, not particularly. So basically, in 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 this type of dashboard, uh, we understand we understand um, we try we try to have a list of the top areas the top productive or the top non-productive, the top performers or the top unperformers uh, in, every, in every measurement we take with wake up so that we can focus on the outliers. Uh, it is very important for us to focus on the outliers. So what's happening in a certain area? Uh, what's happening with a certain group? Uh, why are they so unproductive? Why do they spend so much time uh, to reach the hoist? Sometimes it's just because their access is difficult, so it's up to us to, to manage logistics to make their, their, time, uh, their time easier. Uh, for an example, w the way we manage the, 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 prayer, the, the prayer zones, uh, the mosques uh, on site is, is very important because if we don't keep the, the mosques close uh, to the mess hall areas, uh, and to the ablution areas, uh, people will spend too much time because uh, in this region of the world, um, that aspect is, is a very important aspect. 
now with COVID-19, we have another challenge, which is how do we keep the, 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 the praying areas and how do we prevent people from gathering? And, and, and that, that is yeah. something that, that we still, that we still uh, have a challenge to resolve because despite all the measures, it's extremely difficult to keep, uh, to, to keep people apart. But this type of analysis will allow us to, um, to understand what are the major uh, measures, where are the, the major problems, so that we can focus on them week to week. And, 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 and the beauty of these dashboards is that they change together with the needs of the, of the project. When the project needs to analyze a certain set of data, we go to one dashboard. As, as we evolve, we change the dashboards and we change the data analytics. Uh, it will come a time, and, and I'm pretty convinced about that, that uh, the data the construction companies will start to employ data scientists more and more in order to deal with the huge amount of data. Right now, uh, we are just architects and engineers and draftsmen that that uh, that uh, that are trying to 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 prepare a project. Um, data analytics will come, and we need to be prepared, and we need to be ambassadors for that. Exactly, and data analytics need, of course, data and high quality data. And this is what Wake is really focused on: is like how can we provide you with a trusted data, verifiable data that can be actually uh, uh, that you can depend on it to take uh, actions. Um, I have a few, two, actually, a couple of questions. So I'll start with the first question we received. It's uh, uh, how do you make sure workers keep their helmets in, on all the time, even in resting or praying areas? And does it happen that workers wear the wrong helmet by mistake? Um, you want to answer this or? Um, uh, you, you know, it's, yeah. uh, that's, that's nearly a no-brainer um, instead of helmets. When it, it was a very smart move from Wake Up on, on this particular choice, where to connect, where to connect the, 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 the locator. Because helmet is the only mandatory device at all times on a project. Uh, the only moment that people are not required to wear a helmet is when they are in the mess hall or when they are in the, in the prayer area. And when they are in the prayer area, they, they, they are allowed to leave their helmet outside. When they are in the lunch, in the lunchtime, uh, in the rest area, they're allowed to, to leave their helmet outside. It's not too far away. They can't lose their helmet. They can't lose their helmet. Otherwise, uh, we cannot clock in or clock out because the timekeeping is associated with the helmet. So we better exactly. keep it. And if we have an inactive helmet uh, throughout all day first, we cannot go around the project because no, the, the, the health and safety team and the, and the site superintendents will not allow anyone to, to, to walk around without a helmet. Uh, if we are in an inactive area, uh, in, some, in some cases the storekeeper, they drop their helmet somewhere and then they are in the store all day long. But we know that that person is a storekeeper, so he's supposed to be exactly. in the store. Uh, the, the, the people that are cleaning the toilets, yes, they are all the time in the toilet area, yeah, but it's their, it's their workplace. So they, exactly. it, it, at some point, I remember that we analyzed why are these guys the whole time in, in, yeah. in, in, uh, in the rest area? Uh, yeah, they are cleaning it. So they, it's their yeah, job. It turns out. Okay, let's not focus on this one. <laughs> exactly. I, I think this is, yeah, you, you, you nailed it 100%. It's, it's, it's the idea of this is the only device that you need to actually be on all the time. And this is, we have, uh, I remember a really good uh, kind of uh, uh, slogan that we're with the safety uh, team. We're like saying, look, either work safely or don't work at all. And this is the kind of, the, where we assign productivity and safety on the same time. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, your there, answer. There is, a, mm -hmm. there is a very interesting uh, question here from uh, Michel Fleischenhoyer. Yes, um, I see the question. Regarding, regarding the COVID social distancing of a minimum of six feet with the workers, being, uh, can the workers be informed through an alarm that they are too close to each other? This reminds me when I've asked you about the tower cranes. Um, yes, I know. <laughs> uh, so, unfortunately, that was not possible. I, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Actually, uh, we looked into it. H here, is, here is the problem. Uh, it's a delicate balance. So, uh, when we look into providing more features, let's say in this case, alarming workers, there are two challenges, actually. There are, I mean, there are companies today who provide such a, an alert. Uh, and the first, the first fact that they have is they have to deal with the battery life, which is only one week. Can you imagine every week you have expected 2,000 people to charge their devices? That's number one. Forget it. It's not going to work. 
The second problem is people get an alarm fatigue. If you keep alarming them, coming closer around each other, and uh, th this is this is what they found. I mean, people tried it, uh, and it came with the t with these two main challenges that made it, uh, I would say, unpractical to unfeasible to to deploy on the site at scale. Uh, and this is where WakeUp is really looking into the features where we want to do more with less to a certain extent, but gradually as people get an adopted technology more and more, we will push the limit as we go. Uh, so I have another question. We have two more questions. So for the productive works, uh, a question from Marwan, how can we use the solution to compare the actual deploy deployment of labor at the set locations, ultimately mapped to, uh, I think, WBS, which is the work breakdown structure versus work. plan? Yes. If, 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 I may, if I may answer to that. Please. Um, yes. So um, the WBS, uh, usually on Primavera with, with WBS, that would be possible. And that would even be possible uh, through integration with Sablono. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we are looking into it. The question is, um, the level of detail of the WBS in order to be manageable is not compatible to the level of detail of the works on site that we want to track. So w when we are on, on site, we are installing rebar in one column. The WBS usually talks about columns in an area, not in one column. So th there, are, there are different levels of detail. It's a very good question. Uh, it is a very good point. At, at some point, I believe that, that we need to move into, into that type of analysis. We are still not there. Uh, I think we are, we are still in, a, in an initial stage of the analytics. But, but I, I wish we, can, we could get there as soon as possible. Thanks for, uh, for your answer. I agree. I think, I think uh, uh, the, wor the work breakdown structure from Bramera perspective will be changed with the availability of the data, as you mentioned. So you will be actually dividing the activity differently because you have now zone-based division that allow you to manage and control such, uh, or let's say map the, the, the activity to, uh, to, the, uh, to the, let's say, hours spent on these zones. And we're looking into it together. So we'll see how it's going to come. I'm sure we'll, we'll figure out something. Uh, next question is uh, from uh, Rami uh, Al Jamal. It says, for modular construction where we have boxes of seven by three meters next to each other with a gap of two meter, only box to box, can we have accuracy of finding which worker working in which box? I think this is a question to me, for me. Uh, I'll answer it really quickly. So the accuracy of the location that we have in the system right now, we will be able to improve it by adding additional anchors. So when we, when we look at uh, the accuracy, the, the best accuracy we can get today, it's around two meters. But this means we will have to have uh, additional anchors in a place. So in this example, we, we are looking with uh, one of our uh, actual partners uh, from Dubox to into this, this actual case where uh, we try to manage how many hours uh, a labor is working in, a, in a one box versus, the another, uh, versus others. But definitely there will be an overlapping, especially between uh, the boxes. Um, the next question I have from uh, Marwan is how precise can it be the location in open air project, roads, bridges, and not a single building? Um, I think this is exactly this. I think, I think this is following the same answer that we uh, we just uh, the same answer that I just mentioned. Uh, it's it's in an open area the, the the devices can work actually much better because the the in the anchors can cover a bigger area. Now, when we look at when we in wake up when we set up a site, we focus in the region of interest. So, if you have a big bridge, but your your region of interest are very small, we add additional anchors to improve the accuracy of that location, and we we go from there. So that's how we we actually approach the the zoning and the the, the location. Uh, now. Um, there was one more question maybe we can take before uh, we close. Uh, you want to select a question? Um, there, there are two important questions here, one from an anonymous person and another one, and another one, um, yeah, one from, from an anonymous attendee, which is how, how do workers feel about the system? 
uh, have you had any feedback on how they feel uh, to be monitored and can this have a negative psychological impact? Um, I am I am the project director and this is my helmet uh, here. Uh, okay, you see it here. Uh, so uh, we we have we have the principle of leading by example. So me and my team we are all monitored when when we go on site. I think you are the first uh, one we first connect. Of all. Yes, <laughs> uh, and 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 I and, and, and my people when I complain that they don't go on site, they come and track me to see if I go on site. Um, yes. And they see that I go on site. Uh, so it's an obligation for the safety of everyone. Um, so if we want, if we want to have a productive job, um, we decided to be monitored. I, I'm, I'm not asking anyone to be monitored outside the boundaries of the project. Uh, so we are monitoring, and we had this discussion regarding data protection. It's also always a very, a very, um, uh, a very intense discussion about data protection. We are asking to monitor uh, the location of people while they are in our project, so that we can work in everyone's benefit, so that we can increase the value stick on this project, so that we can maximize the productive time. Um, we understand that, that, that people might not be willing to be monitored uh, outside their working hours, but during their working hours, uh, we believe it's fair to be monitored because, because of several reasons. Uh, first of all, um, health and safety. We need to make sure that every person is safe and we have a, a fall alarm and, and, uh, and, and our system uh, is connected with temperature as well. Uh, does not have a temperature check, but it's linked with um, the antennas are linked with uh, our heat stress monitoring is monitored through the antennas and we know which workers are close to a certain antenna that has a certain heat index. Um, exactly. In addition to that, we monitor crowds. Uh, for example, if we work in a confined area, we know that in that area we are not supposed to have more than X number of people per square meter. Um, and alarms are being prepared, uh, and that, that has been discussed recently, in order to prepare yes. alarms that pop up on the, management, on the managers to say, look, you have too many people in that particular area, you need to take action immediately. Uh, so there are uh, intrinsic advantages on monitoring people. Um, there, is a privacy, uh, there is a privacy discussion. Yeah, we, we address that considering that we are in the workplace and we do it uh, for a greater good. Yeah, and I want to add to that is the system today only works inside the site. It's not a GPS. So we don't use a GPS on our system, which makes it, which, which take privacy seriously by the design of the hardware. So the minute you leave the site, the, the hardware doesn't work because it needs that mesh network for it to function. So uh, we only track and monitor people while, while they are on the site. We don't really care where people go after they leave the site. Um, uh, yeah, th there's also a very interesting question here about uh, does yep. BISICS use Wake Up for its subcontractors who do not attend uh, the site full time? If yes, does Wake Up manage it? The answer is yes. Uh, the answer is Wake Up and the remaining um, digital tools are mandatory in our productive process. So Wake Up, Sablono, and Propagate are in every subcontract that we sign. If, if someone does not want to use Wake Up, uh, we will not sign a contract. And that happened several times. Um, in, in addition to that, we have been asking, um, we have been asking, uh, the several stakeholders, uh, because we are talking about an investment uh, that's uh, as, uh, Asan and his team and then Lucas and his team from Sablono and Dana uh, from, from, from uh, Propagate, um, th their platforms are not for free. So th there, is, th there is a significant investment uh, from B6 on all this innovation. Um, but there is also a very important contribution from every stakeholder on this project. And that goes from every subcontractor that comes into the job as well. 
everyone um, is contributing. And, and after some time, um, after some time, uh, it, it it started to be to be acceptable. And today, people are proud of it. Uh, we have also another question that says from the chat that says, any issue with the poor internet connection? Actually, this is a very good question because when we designed Wake Up, in, we know internet is not always available. So uh, the system actually collects the data uh, from different uh, gateways. So the gateway is the point where all the data get uh, uh, uploaded to the internet. If there is no internet or even no power, we collect the data, buffer it locally until the internet becomes available and then we will upload the data. And that's actually one of the main thing because if you want to provide your data, you want to you wanna have a system that tells you how many hours are actually even lost or let's say not collected by the system. And this is, this is the kind of capability we do. We say, well, for this example, we say, well, this crew have, let's say, 500 hours this week, but we are not sure about 20 hours because at that time, the system was down. But we also can tell if the, the people were not there. So we have this kind of, uh, of metric in a place to, to measure how much data, we call it drop data. So we know they are dropped because of power or any other reason. But in, at the end of the day, if somebody was there, we will be able to, uh, to, to, to know how many hours we're missing uh, due to any uh, disruption on, on the system. Uh, the system is designed to handle disruption to a limit, let's say for a, a full week of no power. This is where we start basically. Uh, so we have enough time to uh, recover any issue related to power or internet. Um, any more interesting question before we end the session? I think we are already 10 minutes and we want to be very respectful of your time, Luis, and other people as well. Exactly. I don't know if you have from your, from your end any, any new technology on that. Uh, well, uh, if WakeCab started monitoring brain signals, that's what we were started with three years ago. <laughs> and we were like, we can tell if, if people are drowsy or even what gonna, they're thinking you're about. You're not going to sell that to me now. Eh? <laughs> yeah, but it turns out practicality is the key. If I yes. expose a sensor to measure temperature, what you end up with is, a, a rigid, is not a so rigid device, a device that might easily break. That's why we removed, uh, let's say, exposable sensors mm -hmm. to help us build a very strong device that lasts for years, actually, on the site without really have to maintain it. I, I, I have one last question, um, mm -hmm. one, one last answer here from Munir Judin. He says, yep. uh, have your data shared with lessons learned analytics to show clients before kicking off a new project? which can help stakeholders to assign the best location of rest areas hoist to reduce the losses in man hours. Uh, so th this, is, this is something defined uh, by the contractors. The logistics are usually are defined by the contractors and the contractors define the methods. And yes, we do use that. And we did not have data from previous projects uh, through Wake Up, but we will have data for the next project. Uh, because we are generating such an amount of data here. Uh, when we talk about data analytics, um, when, when, when we talk about data analytics and, uh, and uh, machine learning um, and improvement in efficiency, we are doing construction. Uh, construction has a big challenge. I, I would say a big dilemma. Uh, which, which goes in line with the need to be flexible and the need to be productive. Uh, if, if we consider that um, from the time when developer decides they want one certain building until the time they sell or use that building, um, 10 to 15 years pass by. So clients say, I need flexibility. And uh, my project is going to be a landmark. Therefore, I need it to be unique. So if, you want, if, if clients want flexibility, and if clients want uniqueness by choosing architects uh, that, that sometimes uh, go creative, um, and, 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 and creativity uh, is, is very often not linked with standardization, um, make 
the life of the construction difficult, uh, the, the life of, of the construction industry extremely difficult because how can we as an industry plan for efficiency and productivity when we need to be unique and creative? So uh, um, Apple and the iPhone is unique and creative, but they produce one product a year. Uh, in, 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 this, in one project, yes, it's one project, but we have a million activities. Uh, and if they change, and if, if they change throughout 15 years, it, it will be extremely difficult to, 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 be, to be productive. On the other hand, we are using technologies to take construction off-site to standardize parts, bits and bits of bits and bits, uh, bits, bits and pieces of the building of the building, as much as possible, in order to be as productive as possible. But we have to be to be conscious that we are unique, and uh, the principle of this industry for whoever invests, they need flexibility. So we will always be as productive as possible considering the, the, two, the, the two initial factors. I it's hope, really uh, interesting. I went above and beyond. No, no, no. No, no, it's, it's, it's really good. Actually, it's really interesting because one of the things that we face today is, as, as a pro construction is you need a solution that adds value today. And that's, that's because you want to you know, help solve the problems as, as you go. And this is not, uh, not, an easy, uh, the, not an easy task, especially when you depend on data uh, or you're looking for a solution that focuses on data analytics. Uh, wh where Wake Cap actually focused today is how can we add value today, but you know very well that the data we collect today can be very helpful for the next project. Uh, and this is where actually the, the, the value uh, rely on the data. And as Wake Up, we are focused on collecting the data, high quality data for, for uh, different stakeholders to take uh, uh, or build a better use cases uh, for the future. Uh, I think we already like um, passed our deadline and I, really, uh, I want to thank you, Luis, for your valuable time with us today and thanks everyone who actually made it today. Uh, we still have a few open questions. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we answer them and get back to you uh, by email. Um, uh, thanks so much, uh, Luis, for your time. It was a very exciting uh, first webinar for us and uh, we're looking forward to have you uh, in the future with more interesting use cases. So in the next meeting, we're looking forward to maybe um, uh, a new helmet that elevates people or something exciting like that. Maybe we'll try. Uh, thank you. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Sam, for your fantastic initiative. Uh, thank you, everyone, that uh, decided to, to spend this, this, uh, this hour and a few minutes with us. Uh, listening to our stories and, 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 to, and to our vision and to the way we see the future of construction and technology. Um, so thank you for sharing this, this time with us. From my side, I am really proud to participate and, and, and to, to, to act as an ambassador for, for digitization and, and, and improvement in productivity in construction. Um, okay, th thank you very much, to, you very much. To, to the attendees that accepted my, my invitation. I spoke from, from South Africa, from, even from Argentina, I had, I had oh, some, wow. some old friends. Um, so thank you very much for your presence. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, guys. And, 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 and more uh, important than anything, stay safe. Oh, yes, of course. We'll be looking forward to for our next webinars, and uh, we, uh, we are excited to share more results as we go. Definitely, we grow with, with these use cases. Uh, so thanks a lot for everyone who joined us today.